Hello, everybody, and welcome to the October edition of Women Matters. Today we are the third episode where we are talking about women and sexuality. And today we want to talk about sexuality and abuse. There was some reason why we did that, why we do that. And we had some of us reporting about their own experiences. And so we wanted to go a little deeper. But before we start, I'm Heidi Hörnlein. I am in Italy and the founder of the Wisdom Factory, where we do the Women Matters, but we do also other conversations. And the next series we are doing starts um, in two days. It is October 24th, and it's called Conscious Living, Conscious Dying. So we are addressing the elephant in the room a little bit and try to uh, get rid of the taboo. So before we start, I would invite all our members to say a little bit who they are, where they are, and, and so on. Who wants to start? Tammy. I'm Tammy. I'm living in Vancouver. And uh, I'm, I'm really motivated to speak the truth as I see it and feel it as, uh, as often and publicly as possible, because I'm really interested in, in how we can really be honest about who we are and what's happening in the world today. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'm Monia. I live in Vienna, Austria. And yeah, today's topic isn't really my topic, lucky as I am. But of course, I'm interested to hear and to see it before the integral grid what we can do about sexual abuse and our own sexuality. Thank you. Anna, you are on screen. Would you like to introduce yourself? Anna? She doesn't hear? Yeah. I, okay. <laughs> uh, I got cut off for a moment, so um, I was just coming back. Um, yeah, I'm in UK, um, and uh, it's really lovely weather here, except it's quite cold. And yeah, I'm happy to be um, here with the uh, Wisdom Factory again. Okay, then let's say Luna and at the end, our new guest. <laughs> Hello, my name is Luna Siavelli. I'm in Vancouver, Canada, and I'm rejoining the Wisdom Factory Women's Matters after some time away and happy to find myself uh, in a third series of abuse and sexual uh, on the topic of sexuality. Um, it's definitely an area I've been exploring with my work, with my somatic work and with family constellation work. And so, and like Tammy, also very passionate about having transparent, um, honest human conversations out in the open. So very grateful to be rejoining you all today. So. <laughs> Thank you very much. And now, last not least, Elizabeth Debold, and I'm very glad you are here. It's a long time that I know you first through your articles, and you oh, yeah. were very <laughs> expert on women. So I would like what you, how you would introduce yourself. Okay. Uh, thanks, Heidi. It's a uh, it's a pleasure to be here. It's it's uh, great to have such an such an interesting mix, Vienna. Vancouver, two from Vancouver. I'm originally from Pittsburgh, but spent most of my life in New York City, and I'm living in Frankfurt now. Um, my uh, background is as a developmental psych psychologist, and I think as as you were um, mentioning, Heidi, I'm uh, my 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 uh, what my academic discipline was gender development, and I think that we're all of us who are adult women are experts in being women. So um, I, I think it's, it's one 
one topic that everyone has some expertise in and has been experimenting with and studying all of our lives. So I'm, I'm happy to be here and, and part of that. Thank you very much. So far we were uh, exploring sexuality, women's sexuality, and in our own experience. And then came this thing in America, no? uh, we, we know about it. And so came up the topic. Some of us said, oh, I have a story to share, you know. And both uh, um, Gertraud is not here and Lucy is not here. They both were sharing, a, yeah, quite a heavy story, I would say. And I'm, I'm it, how do you say, I, I, I'm, mi dispiace in Italian, what is it? <laughs> I'm sorry that, she, uh, that they are not here. But first of all, let's ask who has felt to be have been abused monica uh, monia as she is now uh, said it's not her topic uh, who else uh, has we can raise our hand one two okay has been abused or or had had sexual assault or sexual yeah things like, like that, that. Oh. yeah yeah mm -hmm. okay yeah. so only um Anna and Monia, you don't know what we are talking about. <laughs> Maybe you do. <laughs> so uh, I would like to invite you to, to tell us a little bit how, uh, if you want to, to tell us what, what this sort of abuse was and how you um, responded to it. I mean, I can begin, I think I said it in another uh, settings, I was about 12, 13, and uh, I had difficulty with my menstruation, so my mother sent me to the gynecologist, and strangely, there was nobody around, and the gynecologist abused of me by doing something with his tongue, which I didn't know what it was, I only felt that my legs were trembling, and afterwards I went out and knew perfectly well that there was something not right, but there was nobody I could talk to except my friend, who is the same age <laughs> as mine. And so I was left with this strange situation of not, you know, I didn't know what, what sexuality and how that all feels. And but anyway, I had no support in that. So that was my experience. I have heard that it's now different, that uh, gynecologists and doctors need to have somebody else, a female uh, um, employee or collaborator in their offices when they work. So that was not in my time. Who else? Uh, so my experience was... Uh, when I was four, I had my first sexual experience, a neighbor, um, and he also went down on me. Um, he was 15, so he was a teenager. Um, and then uh, within the same year, another neighbor who was an adult who had a child my age um, also uh, sexually abused me. And then when I was seven my mom remarried and her husband sexually sexually physically and mentally abused me over the course of the next six years at which point uh my sister and i left and moved in with my dad and so that was a natural ending and uh i think it's i i i was i've also been raped in as, an, as an adult um uh, three different occasions. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I think, very prevalent. And uh, interestingly as well, um, I think many people don't recall a lot of the events that happen because we, you know, I, I know that with my um, sexual abuse with my stepfather, um, I moved back in with my dad and I knew that stuff had happened, but it was a full year later um, until I, I actually had the full memory of what had happened come back to me. So 
uh, I think that there's a lot of segmentation, psychological segmentation that happens to kind of protect from the full realization of what that is and how it feels and what it means. So just to make clear, I'm at the beginning, let's say a moderator, but then it's a free flow conversation. Everybody can come in when they want to. Okay. okay. I just, yeah, Tammy and, and Heidi, thank you for, for, for sharing I, I, what, what you shared. I think it's, uh, I, I mean, there's so many, so many th things that come up. I can't say one experience. There's so many actually. And I think that that's part of, part of what's what's so um, extraordinary about this moment in time and and also what's so painful about it um, I mean since the the I mean the, the incident that you said that you mentioned Heidi at the beginning that sort of triggered this episode was the judge Kavanaugh or you know Brett Kavanaugh um, Ford Blasey uh, whole interaction and and the, the whole public response and um, to that, uh, and it it brought one one incident to mind that that but as I said there are so many being a young woman I I was in New York you know as a young woman and it's just walking down the streets it's like it's like constant um, and uh, you know being groped in the subway I mean I, I don't mean just walking down the street and having somebody say woohoo or or whatever, but but people sticking your hand up under your skirt in a bar, or you know, or I mean, all those kinds of things in which you're you're made to feel that you are being one of the things that's interesting, being watched, that you're being watched, that someone is watching you with 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 um, negative intent, with an intent to to do something that is going to violate you. Um, and uh, and then the, the the sense that that people people can in public places violate you and that there's nothing that you can do. Um, so the one thing that came to mind was probably one of my earliest, which was I think when I was in maybe fourth or fifth grade, there was a boy who had wanted. I mean, and this is also strange. There was a boy who wanted to be my boyfriend in third grade, <laughs> and. He wanted to impress me. He had a collection of Playboy magazines, which I didn't know from anything. I, what, what's that? And uh, wanted to give me his Playboy magazines in order to get me to be his girlfriend. And I was like, no, thank you. But in fifth grade, he and a much older, larger kid um, cornered me in the, in the public swimming pool, in the water with everybody around and began to try to to insert, you know, pull my pants down, my bathing suit bottoms down, and insert his fingers in, into my vagina. He didn't. It didn't happen, but he got awfully close, and I was underwater, and uh, it was it was very it was really terrifying. And for some reason, that one is the one that's come up in relationship to this incident. So that's the one, the one I'll mention. I have heard uh, from other people writing about it that because of this incident, they remembered their own life. And so that's, that's really, yeah, because we sort of forget it, but we will, I think, talk about that later. It's just still Luna. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I just want to, I, I need a big breath. And so I want to invite the whole group to take a big breath because I noticed myself holding my breath um, as we speak about these things and I can and I and I can feel those parts of my body where I've locked the trauma and and shut it in and it's it is that contracting feeling so just yeah and whoever's watching and whoever's with us I just invite you to take a big breath as well and really honor and acknowledge what's happening in your bodies um, 
Yeah, also like Martha, there's been many things um, that have happened. Um, some seemingly smaller and some larger. Um, I, Martha, when you said being watched, that really, um, that really connected with something for me as something that I um, was conditioned around being watched and being an object. So my sexuality was not for me. Uh, it was for others and being a woman was not even for me, it was for others. And as soon as I started to develop breasts and become a young woman, um, the, the stream of sexual attention began. Um, and yeah, I'm curious about exploring that piece about being watched and where um, the disassociation happened for me around that. And I became sort of like a shell or I was putting on an act there. I can identify times where I was just sort of being something for others. Um, and the, it's interesting of all the incidents, um, the one that that's really coming through to share right now is um, when I'd first moved into Vancouver um, as a young woman, I must have been 17 years old. And um, I stayed, I, I got a room in a community house with the parents of a very good friend uh, from when I was young. She lived there as well. And um, I was having some, I was having some physical pain and a friend of the father's came over who was a massage therapist. And we had a conversation with the group there about the sexual abuse that I had actually just been recently coming through and that I had reported to the police and that experience and it was very vulnerable. And then this man offered to give me a massage. And when he gave me a massage, he took off my shirt and he started fondling, sexually fondling my breasts. And I went into complete freeze. Um, I just completely shut down and I didn't, um, I was unable to respond um, in the moment. And so that finished and he, and nothing was said. Mm -hmm. And um, I was left with this horrifying feeling that I had betrayed myself, that I had left myself and the confusion around that mm -hmm. uh, and the confusion of this person seeming like a trusted person, um, uh, which was a bit of a theme actually for me with the sexual abuses was more people gaining my trust and, and then getting close enough and, and um, overstepping boundaries in a big way. And the, the feeling that I had after that was such anger. I remember walking down the street after that and I just wanted to there, was, there were these bus shelters that were all made of glass. And I remember just having this feeling like I just wanted to shatter. That I just wanted to shatter all of that glass. And so I just want to speak to that anger that we hold mm -hmm. and what's happening right now when there's a little bit of space that's been created for women to speak our stories, um, that anger that's been pushed down and, and how important it is that we have space for it to be moved in a healthy way. Um, so I'm just acknowledging that and feeling that in my body right now. I have somehow lost the sound and maybe you're not all speaking. <laughs> no, we were not speaking. It's not just, speaking. you know, it is so emotionally devastating to see how normal it is um, <laughs> uh, that we get 
used as objects. While you were speaking before, I also remember here in Rome in the in the autobuses when there are four, the men are pressing against you and try to embrace you. So I always love to go with the car and stay for hours in the traffic instead of going with the buses. But the thing is, why are we so frozen? Why why can't we say anything? I don't know, Anna or Monia, if you want to share something before or give some remark or comment, you're welcome to do so. Uh, I'm still, yeah, it, it, it really moved me, whatever you said. It was just going, I can feel it in my body and I'm just amazed that I lived such a sheltered life and went from my mother to my husband and mm -hmm. Nobody ever tried. Maybe I'm just because I'm tall and I don't know. It's it's just, maybe it's just good karma. I don't know. But uh, I was born uh, during the last days of the war. Mm. Or the last years, actually, in November 41. And... Yeah, there, there must have, I just escaped because I always did what my mother told me. And at that time, a man tried to lure girls uh, to get them uh, carry a letter up to the third floor of a house. And I was approached once. And this man, and of course, I was a very obedient child, but I said, no, my mother told me not to. And he followed me home and it was just around the corner. And then my mother and the housekeeper, they just ch chased him away. You didn't have any handers at that time, so you really didn't. But these children, or these girls, uh, they were abused and murdered at that time. So it was just uh, because I obeyed what my mother told me. I escaped. And, uh, yeah. But uh, I have talked to many women who have been abused in our groups, and... It makes me so angry. Oh my goodness, it makes me so really, really angry and mad. And I have a very soft husband, so uh, <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't really fight with him over that. But yeah. So as you, as you mentioned, the anger deep down. It's, I guess, it's, it's in a whole uh, generation. My. Uh, aunt was uh, abused by Russian soldiers and that was just the tragedy of the war and uh, in 92 we had uh, we mourned for those war tragedies abusing Muslim women in Belgrade and so it's, ne it's never stopped mm -hmm. that women have been used uh, to yeah, to, to make men feel bad. It's like they are objects in a war or uh, nobody sees them, wants to see them as, sub as subjects. And that really, well, it, it got us very sad. So this way we had these vigils uh, at the St. Stephen's Cathedral, in front of St. Stephen's Cathedral, public, and everybody could join us if they disapproved of the, the way the war was run in Serbia and Croatia. So it's, but that's the closest I ever got to abuse. Anna, do you want to leave a comment or shall we go into You are muted. You are muted. You are muted. Mm. Anna, you are muted. <laughs> you must unmute yourself. Is that? Oh, yeah. there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, I had similar sort of experiences, not um, 
not ever really direct um, penetration, but the sort of thing that you talk about a hand up the skirt and somebody trying to touch my breasts. Um, and I also, when Luna was talking about this feeling of being somehow that your sexuality wasn't, wasn't for yourself, that you were there as, um, as an attribute for men, that that was what we were supposed to be there for, that it didn't feel like my experience um, I felt for a long time like a shell, like I was um, yeah, just empty inside. Um, I don't know whether there I had experiences that I can't remember. But I certainly feel like my sexuality was never really, um, never really grew normally. It just felt like it's been distorted and um, mainly distorted because um, because for me, um, you know, the warmth and the friendship and the love was completely absent in any of the first sexual encounters that I had with boyfriends. Um, it was it was just a very physical uh, in the way that it is still portrayed. In the media, it's just portrayed as a very, um, you know, there is one aim. So there's no humanity about it. And so I've never really been able to relate to sexuality, to my sexuality, as something that is part of um, well, a loving relationship. And, uh, yeah, I'll just leave it there. So my question would be, why don't we speak up? Why does it did it take so long that women publicly spoke up? And we speak up now. And how is the future? What can we do? There is an info somewhere, and I think Anna, it's in your part. I mute you. Okay. I I wanted uh, I, I wanted to to respond to what you just said, Heidi. I think the public shaming of women who are sexual the i mean you can see it you, you can see it perhaps in most extreme form in uh, you know in in traditional contexts and uh, traditional religious contexts where uh, you know that have honor killings and where uh, you know women who 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 marry outside of the clan or who um, who are overtly sexual, whatever, are um, are are often killed, you know, killed or or thrown out of the family at at, at least. Um, you know, I, I think there have been very 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 strong social sanctions against women uh, acknowledging their sexuality, expressing their sexuality. Um, even being a sexual unwanted sexual partner, 
um, the, even admitting that someone had raped you. Um, I mean, in, in many, still in, in many uh, cultures, if, if a woman is raped, she needs three witnesses to say that this happened. Otherwise, she's, you know, thrown, thrown out of the, the tribe or murdered. You know, I mean, it's it, so with that in our kind of our collective psyche, you know, is it any, you know, it makes sense that it's taken a long time. And I, I think, I think also it is such a visceral violation and such a profound violation. And even when you're a child, you don't know what it is, but you know, you've been violated. And as you were saying, Heidi, you know, it, it, it's or all of you, it, it's, you know that this, this that there has been something really wrong that happened and you don't know why. You don't know if you did it. Did you, is this something that you asked for? Is, and often you're told that by, your per, by, the, by the perpetrator, like, well, if, you know, you did this. Um, so it's, it's a very risky thing to, 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 to bring it up. And and I was going to say fear fear is is freezing is a response to fear, not being able to move, not being able to respond. It's one you know fight or or flight or freeze. Uh, freeze is a, is really something that people do in 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 very you know frightening situations. And um, and then after that, when you kind of start to put it all together, the shame that you didn't respond is enormous often. So there's like layer upon layer of reasons why one doesn't say something or why one can't even cry out or, I mean, and uh, that's why this be beginning to, to, to speak about this in the culture is, it's a very delicate moment, I think, for, for the whole, for, uh, for our cultures, but, uh, it's 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 a, a it's a seismic shift. <laughs> it's a it's already something that is um, uh, that is really is utterly unprecedented. Uh, for me, when I hear the question, I feel of you know why don't people speak up? I have a visceral feeling of rage because of that stacking, right? Um, you know, I'm embedded in a culture where uh, women aren't respected fundamentally and where, you know, the Me Too movement is just a small window, in fact, into the reality of the generations and generations of, um, of women that have been... Um, that have been raped, abused, and and uh, uh, disrespected. So you know, unpacking that rage is is uh, you know part of I think what we need to do. Uh, and I think that there's you know when I feel into uh, what's what's under there. Uh, it's a knowledge that the the level of imbalance that that we're at is so fundamental that that we can't even really see it. Um, and and I guess this is where you know where the question boils me is because you know even asking the question really shows how how embroiled we we are in in this uh, uh, mental. Um, well, it, it's, I don't even have the words because it is an unseen place and the scale of what is happening is so profound that um, it's hard to know even how to talk about it. Yeah. I would at this point bring in that maybe it's not a gender question, abuse. Because now it's coming out, the Catholic Church have abused a lot of boys. And Catholic nuns have abused a lot of girls. 
So maybe it's more a power question, an authority question than a sexual question. I just throw that in to think about it. And Anna, I would really invite you to, to mute yourself when you don't speak because there is some sort of um, strange echo thing. And then uh, comes to my mind also that still about 20 years ago, I think, in, in Sicily, um, a woman got raped by a boy who wanted to marry her, and she refused to marry him. And he didn't know what he did wrong, because that was the custom. You know, so the I want to say also that there are also mothers who teach these things. It's not only uh, that that men are <laughs> transporting the, the the abuse, but also women. So what 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 is it that we have established this servant-like status of of a woman or of a person who is, uh, let's say, uh, how do you say? Um, weaker than the others and the others uh, feel entitled to do what they want because they obviously could get away with it so far. Are you still there? I feel quite alone here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Hi, Heidi. Um, yeah, just really sitting with all of that. Um, I I agree about the collective trauma. I feel that the collective trauma is so deep, and um, there's shame on both sides. And doing uh, systemic constellation work, it's um, it's something that we get to see the um, the hidden truths of what people are carrying um, and how these um, misuses of power get passed on uh, multi generationally we have to go way way back um, in the systems to to place healthy ancestors oftentimes um, in order just to support the work. And um, I'm also very curious about this question of power and sexuality and power seem so entwined. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm curious about everyone's thoughts around that. And um, I've just gone through a personal process of reclaiming my power through doing 13 moons of conscious celibacy and recording every sexual encounter that I can remember and everything that I can remember about that sexual encounter, um, how I felt, how it came about, uh, who, who the person was, who the people were that were involved. And then uh, really going through my energy and looking at where I'm still corded to that and where I was still giving my energy to those events. So it's been a really deep process. Um, and now find myself exploring relationship again um, after this time. And the vigilance that's in me to protect my personal power and how that's coming up in relationship and it's come up in the form of some deep triggers that fortunately i'm uh relating with a man who really wants to stick with me in those difficult places and to yeah to talk about it and to look at it at what's going on 
and wants to support my personal power. Um, but so just to sort of, yeah, share where I'm at with that journey and that I really see how embroiled the power piece is with the sexuality piece and how I was really groomed to give my power away um, and to not have boundaries. I didn't even know what boundaries were. I didn't even know that I could make a request, that my wants and needs um, were something that I could learn to speak to. Um, and and I, I grew up with a, a father who I've done a lot of healing with and I love him dearly and we have a really beautiful relationship now, I feel. Um, but he was, he came from a very long line of Scottish men who raped and used violence for control and power. And he, what uh, Tammy and I have a psychic teacher, Dr. Jerry DeStefano Weber, and she talks about red raying. So essentially his root chakra was completely open and he was very predatory towards women. So this idea of me being an object and being watched was also what I was shown and what I was groomed by uh, around with the energy of my father. Um, and so that's, that's what I witnessed and that's what I saw that women, the role of women was. And so I took that up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how do we, how do we come to a place together now as men and women? We need each other. We do need each other. How do we do this together? I've been thinking about what it may have been like when it was matriarchal. And I imagine it was very much out of balance then as well. And that there was a lot of anger that the men would have had towards the women. And um, I'd really like to see us finding some places where we can come to the healing together. And I'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you want me to invite you? I think I've said already too much. I want to give somebody else the precedence. Monia, you unmuted and then muted yourself, I think. I'm terribly sorry. Thank you, Tammy. Luna's question really stirred up a lot in me because I enjoy my sexuality. I have all my life, but obviously I was just lucky. Um, I appreciate the possibilities of tantric sexuality. So, including spiritual energy. And maybe this could be the place where we can come together as men and women. But first of all, you have to find a man who is experienced. And uh, <laughs> I know it's, it's just too, let's, let's, let's laugh. It's just too sad. I, I, I'm really feeling pulled down all the time. Anyway, I have sexual experiences with five men in my life, and then I knew what I wanted. 
uh, my tantric partner had experiences with 50 women. So maybe he, he had to learn such a lot so that he could finally keep up with me. I don't know. When I, we met rather late in life, around f the end of 40. But still, it's, it's uh, yeah, either you know, maybe you have to know what you really need and want in your sexual. Uh, and we have not been trained as women to speak up. And, say, and it took me a long time to say, this is what I want. This is this I don't know. So my first big no was really a, an exciting experience. I don't know who said it, but we all have been conditioned uh, to have no boundaries. And to finally settle boundaries was very important for me. And contrary to Anna, I really enjoyed loving sexuality. But still, it was hard to say no at one point. So it's the big no. <laughs> And this afternoon we talked about uh, some incidents that happened at our at the private bath club where my husband and I also sw take our swims and our exercises. And uh, so when uh, there you are introduced to the regulations and now we finally decided that one of the regulations should be that the women must know how to say no and speak up right away and not freeze but speak up right away and this just we talked about it just a couple of hours ago and this just fits in for me perfectly it's it's this frozen attitude and they had an incident where the woman complained after a massage but only three hours three days later and uh, the, yeah, oh, well, that's a, a, a too long story, but it, it fits in very, very nicely how women, this visceral, vis, visceral, visceral <laughs> reaction of freezing and not daring to speak up. Yeah. I think this comes out of the fear that nobody would, would believe you and they, the, my mother would have taken part of, of my, you know, ex-husband all, all the time and not be with me. So um, when you then share something very intimate and then they laugh at you, <laughs> what is that? What, or you should have known or something. So the guilt goes up to you in some way or other. And so I think it's hundreds of years and even more maybe of training, just not to want to have the consequences afterwards and being everything reversed on you, so you better be silent. And I think things like has, are happening now that might be a possibility that in future will be different. And so this is part of my intention no? or our intention to make it public and say with other words, you are allowed to speak up. There are people who appreciate it that you do and they don't think that it's your fault i think that what what uh what you were just saying heidi about your mother not believing you or i think that there there are conversations between the generations that really need to happen and i think it's something that 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 we, wherever we are, and uh, across the, the, the generation and, and with our, our children, our nieces, our, our um, in particular, I'm thinking about the, the woman to woman relationship. I think it's so important to, um, that, we, that, we, that, we, that we say what, what happens. Um, I mean, in the, in the research I've done with girls and, and the work I've done with girls, the, the sense of betrayal by the mother is a very profound thing. And it is something that, that throws, throws young, young women, I mean, I mean girls, you know, teen women, into the arms of very dicey, su you know, suspects. <laughs> because when you, when you know your mother is frozen somewhere or, or lying in a certain way, about about what's true or that you realize 
Um, I mean, there are all kinds of, of, of ways that this gets so complicated. Um, one of the most powerful mothers I ever met was a mother who, 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 who talked to her, her daughters about the things you're not supposed to talk about. Um, and was, you know, and said, these are my stories. They, they are not yours. Because the, the kind of intergenerational rep repetition um, that happens, I, I know, like I found out and I, I don't, I, I don't want to, to say, to speak about it here because it's not only my story. So that doesn't feel right. But I know that when something happened with me around, around, around sexuality and I, I felt I had to tell my mother, she, she, she said, that happened to me, call me back in two hours. And it was at that moment that something broke open for me that was like, oh my God, I thought holding this was what it meant to be a woman because that's what my mother had done. And when she said, you don't have to, this I did, you don't have to, or you can make a different choice. That was so powerful. That, that, that moment changed my life completely. And when I hear, I mean, the number of, of stories that I've heard from women, women who had, uh, who had a pregnancy or had a child at 16, and that no one, she never spoke about it, no one knew, and her daughter at 16, bam, has, gets pregnant and has a child. You know, these things repeat, and there's some way that we have to have the courage to break that cycle, the, 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 the mother line. So that's that's one thing. And then, Moni, when you were speaking, there was something that kind of broke through that that actually is very much, I think, um, in line with the way uh, a, a lot of what I've, I've been thinking about. It. In some ways, the when we think about sexuality, there's a way in which it feels too limiting. It feels too focused on something that is not big enough for our lives and for what life wants from us. And that, that I prefer to speak about arrows. <laughs> this is my, my line. Eros is my line. <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> but Eros, Eros, yes, sure. Eros is the erotic. It's a sexual impulse. But eros is the creative impulse, the thing that 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 allows us to engage in the world and make our 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 contribution to the world. And eros is is the the, the inspiration of spirit that is that 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 wants to come together, that wants to find new modes of expression, new ways of being. And it's like well, I, I I often feel that we we women are are channeled into thinking. A, a, that, that even by by getting so involved with trying to figure out our sexuality that we're missing the bigger picture and we're already falling for the trap that has been set for us. That this is all that we are and this is who we are. And I, there's a way in which I, I feel that there's a, a kind of reframe that, that is about reclaiming our power at all levels <laughs> you know, sexually and creatively, and that there's, there's something, um, there's just something really Im important about that. I guess, I guess you know the song, Spirit am I, Woman am I, Woman am I, Spirit am I, I am the infinite within my soul. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, uh, I used this once when I felt that I was mentally, uh, in vigor, well, mentally not abused, but it was kind of a takeover during a trip. Trip, and I sat down and I sang this song, and I could separate myself from the man. So this was a very, very uh, deep experience I had, and I would advise every woman to learn that song and to sit down and to sing it. <laughs> and to know who she is. Can you say it again? There was so much echo. Um, 
A woman am I, spirit am I, I am the infinite within my soul. I have no beginning and I have no end. That's who I am. Monia, sing it. <laughs> Too much echo. <laughs> but it's, uh, I guess it should be on YouTube. It's a very popular song and I really cherish it. Thank you. Okay. So I noticed that we're getting close to the top of the hour. And I, I, I feel like there's just so much in this topic. And I feel the, the power of what it is to be lighter about it as well. Like there, there's, there's some switch that I'm wanting to make and feel and experience in this conversation to be able to be with that transformation and, you know, part of Elizabeth and Moni, your last exchange helped to get me there. Um, and yeah, you know, how do we model for each other the empowerment of what it is to be that essential source? Um, you know, yes, I present as a woman, but it's not a gender thing. It's, it's that we are all this essential source of, of uh, beingness and consciousness embodied. And um, for myself this year, one of the things that's happened for me is that I, I am having a completely new uh, experience with my sexuality and, um, and feeling a transformation of, of who I am in relationship with my sexuality. And, uh, and so it's, it's not easy to put it into words I just feel fundamentally changed and that um, this, this uh, re awakening of my sexuality has, uh, has allowed me to open to another person as well. And so it's not just that I feel this change inside myself, but I have invited someone into my life to share that with me. Um, and and I'm open for for this new experience of my sexuality to be um, completely different than I can even imagine. So I feel this 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 uh, this uh, unpacking, emerging of a new way of being in myself and in my body um, that's completely new. And so I just wanted to share that in the context of our talk today. Um, and it's, it's no, um, and I think that the work that it took me to, 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 you know, move through the early sexual experiences, it took until I was uh, 48 to be able to be a part of, uh, to, to experience this transformation. So anyway, thank you. Thanks for having this, this topic surfaced. And with that, I'm complete. Thank you, Tammy. Awesome, congratulations. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, I see Tammy shared a little bit with us in another group. It is really awesome, yeah. And I wanted to say a little bit what, as, a, as a summary, what I have heard you also, Luna and Monia, and also you, uh, uh, Tammy, and what was my experience with Mark. We can go into a different form of relationship, but obviously we need a long time <laughs> to overcome first all this, let's say, shit which has happened, and I don't say shit because other people have done it to us. It's also our own shit, no? We are perpetuating constantly um, uh, the, the ideas we have about men, about sex, and what we should be and what we should not, not be. And it obviously seems needs some time to, to come to terms with who we, who we are and who we could be. And then when we find a person who is 
willing to support us in that, that's, that's great. And I'm glad you all have that and I had it. <laughs> Maybe I find it again, I don't know. Anyway, I, I would invite you to, if you want to say a closing word, mine is thank you and great conversation. And yeah, my heart is with you and with me too. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Heidi. Um, I just, I just want to um, share the joy that I'm feeling in the gift of the no, and and this um, this feeling and this journey of making friends with our pleasure, and so that's kind of what I'm summing up with um, in me right now is all of all of the confusion uh around being beings that are capable of so much pleasure and and what that is to make friends with it um and that the no creates freedom for both of us for for men and for women and for all of us um and that it creates safety and um i feel like we could talk about this for a long time but it's been really a wonderful hour and thank you everyone for your your thoughts and experiences and contributions. Yeah. Thank you. Just say thank you. And I it was wonderful to meet you. Um, meet you pixelated. And uh, I'm I I I think this is a beautiful ending. So I just leave it leave it at that. Yeah, I also want to thank you, and I want to thank you, Elizabeth. It feels like having a sister, a twin sister. Um, yeah, thank you all. Yeah, and again, thank you, and we see you next month. I will send out the doodle. And Elizabeth, I don't have your information. If you send me a photo and uh, something about you, I will put it on the website, and then there will be forever, and whoever comes <laughs> and want to see and connect with us via the website. They have the possibility to do to do it, and also on uh, on YouTube logically. So, thank you, and for everybody who is watching, and now or later, please don't hesitate. Connect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bye -bye. Grazie mille.